don't think that's for, for, for Ben or me. I think that's directed towards uh, Mr. Turner. I'm sorry you feel like that, Rodrigo, but feel free to take that comment and stick it up your ass, old boy. <laughs> you, know, you know, it just goes to show that people will find a reason to complain about anything. <laughs> you, you, you goddamn right. All right, everybody. So that will leave it for NFA Live. Well, yeah, people will find a uh, reason to complain about anything, and they'll also find a reason to shift their opinion and their position as things start to unravel. So welcome, everybody, to the live stream. Uh, as a reminder, we'll be joined uh, by Ben and Guy into the Cryptoverse and uh, Coin Bureau. We'll be doing the NFA Live show tomorrow on Ben's channel, so check that out. But today, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the markets and uh, what I picked up yesterday. So now I'm sure everybody's been checking their portfolio, which is uh, par for the course. Not a good idea all the time, but I mean, once we have like a, a little dip, a little pullback like we did yesterday for obvious reasons, I think it's a good idea to reassess where you want to go. And of course, we've dropped a pretty good amount uh, just in the top 10 itself. So the question I had when, for, when I did the video yesterday, which we talked about Tangent Wallet mostly and the staking prospect, the question was, you know, Robert, are you going to add anything to your portfolio because it's such a dramatic dip? And the answer is yes. So yesterday I bought a little bit of some different uh, altcoins and of course, Bitcoin. But I wanna go through why. And I wanna give this a little bit of a context because I know when we when we focus in about what's going on like the here and the now, we don't really have a great assessment of the situation going on. So what I wanna do is, because we still believe in the four year cycle, we still think that they're intact. I still think 2025 is gonna be huge. And I still think we have to get through this presidential election before we can really do anything on scale. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a look, uh, just a little history and just to see where we're at. Because I, I know when we see these prices, we're like, ah, Bitcoin's not at 200,000, this sucks. Or uh, Ethereum and its ETF is, is lagging and it's only 2,300 bucks or whatever else it is. And this is awful. This is just the worst. I wanna remind you of some things, which is how far we've come in such a short amount of time. This is from CoinMarketCap. And it's, a, it, it's looking at historical reference ranges of prices. And what I have here is a historical snapshot Snapshot, snapshot, uh, 4th of October, 2020, just four years ago. Remember that again was the having year before we uh, exploded exponentially uh, for the ma magnificent bull run that was 2021. Check this out as a quick reminder, just four short years ago, Bitcoin, I remember this time because I just thought to myself, man, everything's lagging. It's just chopping side. This is boring. Bitcoin was 10,669. Who would here would pay for that? I would. I'd love to go back in time for that. It'd be awesome. But of course, when you're in that time frame, you don't realize just how good you have it and the opportunity that is before you. Ethereum was 350 bucks. XRP was 24 cents, which I got to tell you, I think is like the same price right now. I, I'm just curious. What is XRP at? 56 cents. Eh, still it's a pretty good deal. Binance coin was 20 like $29, Binance coin today is, wow, $537. It's pretty good. Bitcoin Cash 221, Chainlink was $9. What is Chainlink now? This is how much I check my portfolio. I don't even check it. 1052. Wow, that's not that great. $9. Polkadots, Litecoin, SV, Cardano was $0.09. Cents. What is Cardano now? $0.33. Cents. Pretty good. Tron, so on and so forth. So when we take a look at this, we're like, you know, I wish we could go back in time and I wish I could have bought more and I wish and I wish and I wish and I wish. Well, we can't go back in time. But what we can do is take the lessons from the past to see where we could potentially go. And I got to tell you, I think in our market, not all the altcoins are going to go up. I do think Bitcoin will go up. I think it's the safest asset, but it won't be the most exponentially high driven asset that we have in the digital asset space. So the question I had asked myself was yesterday was, was yesterday just a flash in the pan or was it something that could be sustained as far as a sustained negative flow or a trend going downwards? Well, it could because of course, what did we have yesterday? We had Iran and the missile strike uh, to Israel. And it seems like every time we have those, everybody flips out and there's this term that keeps getting used. And tell me if I'm wrong here. Anytime there's an escalation in war, we hear the same thing. World War III is coming. It's World War III. 
World War III is right around the corner. And I'm not saying it's not. At some point, this world's going to just decimate every single nation, I think, because we just cannot live peacefully. But if we take a look back, that was the same tone, the same verbiage that was used uh, when we had the Ukraine invasion from Russia. I don't know if you guys remember this, but this was back in 24th of February, 2022. And that was the whole the whole blurb, which is World War III is right around the corner, World War III. And then, of course, nothing really happens. I mean, not nothing. I mean, Ukraine is in a brutal war right, right now with Russia. But as far as World War III, where all different heads of nation states and countries are fighting each other, that's not the case. And we see it happen over and over again. Now, when there's an escalation, we'll hear it again. World War III. The markets react. They get panicky. They get scared. People start selling off because the market is essentially irrational. Could they be right this time? It's anybody's guess. But who knows? And then also, on, on top of that, uh, you know, we talked about this yesterday. We have longshoremen on the East Coast of the United States, <clears throat> and they are talking about this uh, massive strike and crippling America, which this is roughly 60% of the imports of, of all these uh, uh, ports that are across America. And of course it could. But remember, if we're talking about supply chain, we heard the same thing <clears throat> for COVID. <laughs> Excuse me. And with, with COVID, it was the same thing, disrupted global supply chains, which actually did happen. And it was quite a scare. But what happened? In a very, quite honestly, in, relatively short amount of time, you would think for a global pandemic, whether you believe it or not, it gets resolved and then prices start to uh, appreciate. So like we talked about yesterday, there are things that we can control in our sphere of control and other things are, are outside of it. So what do we do? So for me, I thought to myself, okay, what should I be buying right now? Because it was a drop of between 10, 15, sometimes 20% for altcoins. Bitcoin, I think was around five, 6% or somewhere around there. So I thought to myself, okay, what is out there that is actually having any kind of unlocks? Because I don't want to get trapped in some kind of crazy unlock of a, of a certain digital asset and then drops like another 30%. This is actually from uh, Nick over at Coin Bureau, and it talks about October unlocks. Now, not all of these are the same. You have to understand that some are minor unlocks, some are major unlocks, but I take a look at Celestia, the value of that unlock is $1 billion worth. That's 175 uh, million tokens, which is 81% of the circling supply. And we talked about this a couple of days ago. So for me, I'm like, Celestia is out. Sweet, maybe not too much. I mean, it's 114 million worth. And then down the line, it goes Aptos, Arbitrum, Zeta, Immutable, Stark, Tyco, Axie, Infinity, Apecoin. These are all going to be unlocks at a certain percentage of the circling supply. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to stay away from those for right now. Let them unlock and then go from there. I'll take a look at it. And if you're, if you're worried about specific unlocks, which kind of screws up the whole uh, price appreciation thing, because when they get unlocked, who do they get un unlocked for? Usually early investors, VCs, and communities, which a lot of the time they do dump. So just take a look at token.unlocks.app. There's a link in the description. You can check it out. So... I thought about that and I go, okay, I, don't, I don't want to buy into those. And then what I took a look at was the time and risk bands. And this of course is on Ben's site and you know, the Cryptoverse, there's a link in the description. Some parts are free. I don't think this part is free, but uh, I could be wrong. But uh, I'll just show it to you a little bit real quickly and we'll go from there. So if I'm taking a look at the risk levels, I want to say to myself, okay, wh which one of these are distressed assets? Well, Bitcoin actually fell below 0 0.5, which I found interesting. I'm like, okay, well, if it's below 0 0.5, I actually have to increase my daily dollar cost average based on these risk levels. So it's below 0 0.5, it becomes less risky to buy. It could go down to 0 0.4 or 0 0.3, which would be very low. But for this one, I just uh, actually increased my daily buy of Bitcoin. And I took a look at Solana and I'm like, you know, 0 0.63 is kind of on the higher side. All right. Maybe not so much. Ave, Ethereum, not my things. I've got a good amount of Ethereum, so I'm not going to buy any more into that. Now I took a look at BNB, potentially. XRP, maybe. Chainlink, yeah. I've still got a lot. I'm like, eh, not too much. And this is where it gets interesting. Avalanche, 0 0.38, below 0 0.4. Okay. So I said, okay, I'll pick up a little bit of Avalanche. 
No Monero, no Litecoin. Cardano is a little bit lower. I picked up a little bit of that. Maker, Polkadot. Sorry, I don't believe in Polkadot anymore. Cosmos is lower. Don't see it. Just didn't pick up anymore. Stellar, VeChain. And look at these ones. Polygon, Tezos, and Algorand. Now, this isn't everything you should look at, but if we're taking a look at risk levels, and Polygon, I mean, they, there's no, and just matter of fact, this is one of the examples I use. Polygon, they have no unlocks. And the total unlock pro process is they're 100% unlocked. It's just they just haven't been getting the greatest of press lately. So I'm like, okay, I'll buy some more of that. So I came over here. This is my current portfolio. So I bought more Bitcoin yesterday. Not so. I bought a little bit more near, a little more Cardano, a little AVAX. Stacks, which is a layer two solution, smart contract solution on uh, built on Bitcoin, none of this, and Polygon. And that's what I picked up yesterday. I think over the next week, two weeks, month, three months or so, I think I'll be rewarded. I don't know if it's going to be the greatest of all time, but I think that's where we're at. That's where I that's where I wanted to spend my money. Now, I know in the live stream and in the people that actually watch this later, they will say, but Rob, you should have picked up XYZ coin because it's going to melt faces and you should have picked up uh, this layer two solution or this layer one. Look, I get it. And not be because it's just because I bought something doesn't mean that I don't think that your project has value or is great. It's just for me, these are the things that I know and I look into and I have a reasonable understanding of them. So I'll just stick with that. If there's something else out there, yes, I probably missed the next thousand X token. I'm sure I did. And if it works for you, fantastic. I'm just telling you where I'm coming from and what I'm doing. And it's all up to you, whatever you want to do. So that's what we have for, for what I bought and where I think things are going. Again, I think if we zoom out, things aren't as bad as we always seem to believe that it is, especially if we are unfortunately watching the news too much and we hear the, the uh, uh, terms of World War III, recession, depression imminent, and a whole host of things. So for me, I look at this, I go, not too bad. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And also, as you may notice in my portfolio, I'm pretty heavy Bitcoin still uh, because I think it's going to do very well and it's safe. And for me, that's where I have. But, you know, I'm still into altcoins. I still get into it. Now, I know that's not a very popular opinion on some on some places. But for me, I just like, you know what? I got time. I've got time, so I'm going to keep doing this. But there is a project called Velos. And I'm I am a part of Velos Finance. And what they're doing is instead of the TGE or the token generation event, which is when you actually launch your token, what they do is they go post TGE to these different projects and they say, hey, uh, how about if we were able to give our community members like a 30 or 40% discount for the current price if, if they can lock them up for two or three months? I think this is going to do well. And like, well, like we say here, Velos is VC deals for everyone. So I want you to check that out. There's a link in the description for the X or Twitter account, which will go to all the different, the Telegram and the website. And you can find out that's something that you'd like to do. But uh, for me, I see like this could be an opportunity, especially as we're going to 2025. And then just to reiterate about the uh, whole thing with uh, Bitcoin and why I'm still so heavy on it, even though I do dabble into all coins here and there, as some people call them S coins. But there's a reason. And I think the reason comes down to, well, what Michael Saylor did with his company, MicroStrategy, essentially being a proxy for Bitcoin. And we saw it, right? The stock of MicroStrategy went up exponentially, especially the last uh, six to nine months or so, because they, they hold so much Bitcoin, even though they are a data analytics service. But here's another, another example of why I think Bitcoin will do well and why I think other businesses will do the same thing. MetaPlanet did the exact same thing as MicroStrategy. MetaPlanet's Bitcoin strategy lifts their stock by 443%, targets 1,000 Bitcoin. So this is uh, real quick. Japanese investment company MetaPlanet made its largest number of Bitcoin purchases to date following the acquisition of 107 Bitcoin, which was like roughly 7 million. This is for uh, October 1st statement. MetaPlanet's Bitcoin move has proven largely successful help the company stocks outperform traditional financial assets like, like the US dollar, gold, and Japan's Nikkei share index. And you can just see that, I mean, 
in a very short amount of time, because they added Bitcoin to their balance sheet, they outperformed Bitcoin gold, okay, and the US dollar. Look at that. And that's essentially what MicroStrategy did. Now just extrapolate that to other companies when they hear the same thing, like, oh, another company did what MicroStrategy did, and oh, their stock went up 443%. Why? Why wouldn't they dabble into that? At least a little diversification. So again, that's why I'm bullish on Bitcoin. And also, there was this piece. This is David Bailey uh, from Bitcoin Magazine. I didn't know this. He says, uh, it's starting to dawn on me that there is a huge amount of money that can be invested into Bitcoin on the state level. I didn't know that. Not just federal. And this is crazy. State pension funds manage $6 trillion, and some of them allow a single official to make investment decisions unilaterally. I got to tell you, I don't know who that one person is. That's a lot of power. We should lobby those individuals. And he says, for example, according to chat, according to chat GPT, which I got to tell you is not that accurate for sure, a single individual has unilateral authority in New York, North Carolina, and Connecticut. Take that with a grain of salt because he's just saying it's chat GPT. Those state pensions, pensions and aggregate manage $450 billion, or roughly half a trillion dollars. A 5% allocation from these pensions would exceed the total net inflows to date in the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Again, I don't see why pensions wouldn't jump on that, potentially. I mean, not like, hey, let's dump our entire pension fund into Bitcoin, but hey, maybe we should diversify one to 3%, or like we say here, 5%. Imagine that what that would do for the price of Bitcoin. So I'd like to... Uh, I like where that's going. And then lastly, before we take off and do a little Q&A, this was a, I posted this yesterday because as you may have noticed yesterday, I think gold either hit its all-time high or near all-time highs uh, when, when there was talk about World War III again and a great recession. And I, said, and, I, and I put this side by side. I said, Bitcoin versus gold during missile strikes, longshoreman strikes, we'll see what happens as time plays out. But you know, gold acted just like a, a store of value. And we have to be conscious that that's exactly what it is. And I, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, why, why did that happen? Because, I mean, we see it as a store of value, especially a long-term store of value. If you, if you extrapolate that data across the last six, four to six years and just housing prices, it's obvious. But why is it in the short term it's like that? And this was actually summed up pretty well by uh, Serenity Chen. They say uh, there are way more boomers, nah, I'm old too, that still, that still flee to gold during panic news issues. That makes sense. And where is a, a concentration of wealth? Usually it's the hands of the older individuals. This is why gold goes up for now. And then you have Coinbase and Binance using bad news to manipulate and check out Bitcoin leverage. Well, uh, there was a mass amount of liquidations yesterday. I want to say three quarters of a billion. Short-term noise, ignore it in stack. And uh, I got to hand it to him. That's a reasonable explanation. I think it's just, that's just the way it's been for quite some time. And it's going to take a little bit more time. So I know like people say, well, Bitcoin's going to go to the moon and forever. Sure. But just remember, I think it's going to take a little bit longer than what we think it is. But it could be wrong. Let me know where I'm off in the comment section. That's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to stick around, we'll do a little q and I'll answer all your questions, and we'll go from there. If you got to take off, take off. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow on Ben's channel for NFA Live.